In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this 3D text effect using Inkscape. And to follow along with what I'll be doing here, you'll need to download and install this special font that I used. I'll have a link to this in the description below. Make sure to download and install that font before launching Inkscape and you should be good to go. And before we get started, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me whenever you want. I'll have some information about that down below as well if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So the first step is I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm going to write some text. And for this demonstration, I'm going to turn on caps and just use the word Inkscape. And I'm going to activate that font that I have installed. Let me go to the text editor by going to text and selecting text and font. And the font is called Call of Ops, I believe. There it is right there, Call of Ops. I'll activate that. We can close out of that now. And this font works well because it's all square edges. There's no curves. If there's curves and bends, it's not going to work as well. So this sort of font works really well. I'm going to put some spacing between these letters because the effect that we're going to create, it works better with some spacing. So let me grab my text tool again and I will come up to here and where it says this option right here that says spacing between letters when you hover your cursor over it. I'm just going to manually input five and see how that looks. A little bit better, but I'd like to see more. So I'm going to try 10, maybe a little more. Okay, 15 looks good. And what I will do is I'll take this from text and I'll convert this to a path. So I will go to path and select object to path. And now I'm going to apply a couple of path effects to this grouping of letters. So let me come over here to path and choose path effects. And the path effect I'm going to choose first is the envelope deformation path effect. So I'll click on that. And where it says enable left and right paths, I want to turn that off. So let's disable that. And let's click on this button right here next to where it says top bend path. And now we'll get this green line going over the top of the text. And we can just take that line and click and drag that up to give this a little bit of a bend. And I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. I'll come over here to where it says bottom bend path and click on that. And I'll move that up as well. Now a good indication for how far you should move this is over here on the left hand side. You notice if I move this too far up or too far down, the letter I starts to either bow inwards or outwards depending on how far I move it. So you want to bend it to the point where it's nice and straight. It doesn't have to be exact, but if it looks pretty straight like it is right there, that's, that's good enough. And once that's done, let's apply another path effect. Now I will go to perspective envelope. And once you have that applied, you should be able to grab your nodes tool if you don't have it uh, selected already. And then just hold control and move this node out to the right. And then I'll hold control and move this node out to the left. And now we have a little perspective effect. So that, that looks a lot better. That helps us create this effect. And now let's convert this to a path to finalize these path effects that we applied. So we'll go to path and select object to path. So at this point, I'm going to right click the text and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make this copy gray. And I'm going to hold my control key and scale this up a little bit and then hold control and move it up a little bit like that because we're going to create a little bit of a, a drop shadow sort of effect between the two. So I'm going to select both of those now and I will go to extensions, render, or generate from path. And I will choose extrude, extrude between two paths. And the option I'm going to choose is I'm going to change this from lines to polygons and I will click apply. And once that's applied, you can click close. And what I want to do now is click and drag over everything to select it and then deselect the text that's on top. So to deselect it, I'm going to hold shift and just click on it. We want everything selected except for that top layer of text. And then we will go to object, select ungroup, and then go to path and select union. And that's the effect we're going for right there. So I'm going to take this top text item and I'll make this white. And then I'll take this black object in the background and I want to apply a stroke to this. So I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the color black down here in the color selector to add a black stroke going around these letters. And then I'm going to open up the fill and stroke menu by double clicking this black color stripe down here. And I'll go to the stroke style tab and I want to increase the size of this. So I'm going to make this a lot bigger. I want to make the join squared so it's not rounded. And I'm gonna make this, that actually looks pretty good as it is. I'm just gonna use 30 just to use a round whole number. 
Now the problem with doing this sort of thing, you'll run into these little bugs where if I grab my nodes tool, you'll notice like right here, this corner looks a little, it doesn't quite look right. And that's because these nodes are stacked on top of each other. There's a little bit of a glitch that goes on there. So to correct this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first select all of the nodes and I just wanna make sure that they're corner nodes. So I'll click on that. And then what I'm gonna do is where you see these little imperfections, where you see like this little double corner where there should be one corner, just select those two nodes and merge them together using this button up here that says join selected nodes. And that right there will fix that. And you'll notice this in other spots. If you move this around, you'll notice we get this little wonky effect right there. You can fix that by just joining these nodes together. And then just look around to see if there's anything else. Like right here, you'll notice you have these stacked nodes over here. We can fix that as well. Let me join those together. And I will just inspect the rest of this real quick to see how that looks. Okay, everything's looking good here. And once everything looks good, what you could try to do next is we can go to path and select stroke to path. And if everything worked out well, you won't see any kind of glitches or errors. If you missed any corners, it, you'll probably have something sticking out like a sharp corner or something. It'll, it'll stick out a lot and you could just go back and correct it using the method that I just showed you. Now we can ungroup this by going to object and selecting ungroup and then unify together by going to path and selecting union. And now I wanna to go to the nodes tool and once again, select all of these nodes and make sure that these are all corner nodes because we're gonna repeat this process. We're gonna duplicate this, right click, go to duplicate and now I'm gonna create a border going around the outside and I'm gonna use this copy for that. So to do that, let me hold my shift key or you know what, let me come down here and pick a color to use. I'm just gonna use blue. So I'm going to make this blue and then hold shift and click that same shade so that there's a stroke applied to it. And I'm gonna send this to the back. And what I will do now is let me change the width of this something to a greater value so I can see that better. Maybe five, maybe a little more. 10. Okay, 10 looks good. And then I'll do the same thing again. I'll go to path, stroke to path, object, ungroup, and then path, union. And now we have the 3D text with the outline going around the back of it. So now I'm going to create a little bit of a shadow effect going through the center of the text. To do that, let me first zoom out and select everything here. And I'll zoom back in by pressing one on the keyboard. And I'm gonna hold control and scale this up. We need the objects to be really large for what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna take this text object, well, let me deselect it first. I'm gonna take this text object on top, right click it and go to duplicate, and go to the nodes tool, select all of the nodes, and make sure that they are all corner nodes again. And then let me go to the select tool, and I'm gonna make this copy gray. So let me go to my color picker down here. I'm gonna choose a lighter shade of gray, something like that. And then I will go to the path effects menu again. And the path effect I'm gonna use is offset. And if you go to your nodes tool, you should be able to grab one of these nodes. I think it's this one right here. Yeah, you can grab that node and you can scale this text down uh, by creating an offset. We wanna scale it down just a little bit like that. And that looks pretty good. And now we can go to path and select object to path. And now I wanna cut off the top half of this text. So let me grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'm gonna click and drag to create an ellipse. Let me make this a different color. I'm gonna go with red so we can differentiate it. I'm gonna get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking the red X down here. And let me go back to my fill and stroke menu and bring down the opacity of this in half. And I wanna place this ellipse going halfway through the text. And I wanna make sure the curvature of this ellipse is somewhat consistent with the curvature of the text. So for my example here, I gotta make this a little bigger. I'm gonna hold control and make this bigger, and that looks a lot better. And we wanna make sure that this is centered on the text. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on the text, and I'll open the Align and Distribute menu by going to Object, Align and Distribute. And I wanna make sure I have last selected chosen from this dropdown, and I will center the text on the vertical axis like that. Now what I will do is I will go to, well, let me click off of this first. I wanna adjust the position of this. I'm gonna move this up just a little more, right about there. And then I'll hold shift and click on the text. And with the circle and the text selected, we will go to path and select intersection. And now I will go back to my fill and stroke menu. Let's click on the fill tab and we'll give this a linear gradient by clicking on this button right here that says linear gradient. Grab the gradient tool, which is over here. You can also grab it by pressing G on the keyboard. And I'm gonna take the opaque stop and put it up here and take the transparent stop and put it down here. 
and I'm going to hold control just to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. And that right there is the look that we're going for. So a next step would be to add a dark colored background going behind this text. Now, if you notice what I did over here, I have this dark background with a lens flare going over it. If you just want to use this 3D text as it is, then you're done. But if you want to see how I created that other effect, then I'll show you that now. So let me grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a big rectangle and I will send it to the back and I'll bring the opacity all the way up and I will make this a dark shade of gray. 90% gray looks pretty good. And now I'm going to apply a lens flare over this. I'll have a link in the description to where you can go to download a copy of these lens flares. I created these for uh, my website last year and you could download a copy of them for free. Just check the link below and download the zip file and extract it. And when you have that folder open, you'll notice you have these different lens flares here that you can use. I'm going to use number three, flare three, and I'm just going to import that in there. And if you notice, it's a little too small for the text. So let me take the text. Whoops, let me zoom out. Let me take the text and make that a little smaller. I'm going to hold control just to uh, lock, lock the aspect ratio. I'm going to group it together by pressing Command G, or that would be Control G if you're on Windows or Linux. And then I'll take this lens flare and I'll just place it over the top over here. And I will resize my objects as needed. So I'll put this right about there and I'll scale this down a little bit. And then you could press Escape to deselect everything. Press 1 to zoom out to 100% and we're done. That's how you can go about creating that 3D text effect using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.